Hey everyone, J7Js here, bringing you a video on how to become overpowered by getting stronger than normal equipment that isn't sold at shops much earlier in the game. This will require some luck and I'll show various grinding methods and tips all pre chapter 4, so let's get started. If you can encounter human enemies in random battles earlier on into the game, such as chapters 1, 2, and 3, they will usually have items that are superior to the ones that you can buy, and if you're at higher levels, some of the best chapter 4 equipment can even be obtained much earlier than normal. The best way I found was to get lucky entices on them with speechcraft to have them join the party, then remove their equipment. You can also attempt to steal their items or hope they drop the item you want if they turn into a treasure chest, but I found these methods inferior to enticing. Now, this part will require some insane grinding, but if you want the strongest knight swords in chapter 2, there is also the Gafgarian ninja exploit, which I'll also be showing. There are many ways to tackle this, but I'll show how I went about doing it. Just note that this will be very time consuming and I recommend some free time without being bothered in a few situations, because if something comes up, you'll have to restart the process. The first thing I do recommend is to get Ramza and 4 other generics to level 99 in chapter 1 to increase the JP spillover gain to Gafgarian in chapter 2. You also have to unlock Knight, Archer, Monk, Geomancer, and have these jobs be at level 8. If you don't do this step, it will take a lot longer for Gafgarian to get JP, or you may not even be able to get enough from Spillover, making a long process turn into an even longer one or impossible one. And for abilities, get JP boost and focus from Squire, Friend speed and power from Knight, Chakra from Monk, and optional but highly recommended Critical Recover HP from Monk, and Slow, Immobilize, and Swiftness from Time Mage. Once you have these things, I recommend heading over to chapter 2. First step here is to have Gafgarian become a level 2 Fell Knight in the first battle and to start spilling over some JP from other jobs to help unlock Ninja. You can always let him unlock this himself, but if you want to speed up the process, have Ramza or Generic as a Squire with JP boost and to use Focus or other abilities during battle. You can deploy 4 characters at door. So here, I like Ramza as a Squire, a Knight, Monk, and a Geomancer. Make sure they'll have Fundaments and JP Boost. You can also remove Gafgarian's sword, which I recommend doing as he does solid damage, but I forgot to do so with these clips. What you want to do is to KO Agrius and all enemies besides one. Once Gafgarian unlocks Knight, have Ramza start tailwinding all the other units. Just not Gafgarian and the last enemy. Once Gafgarian has Monk unlocked, put your knight into critical HP and move him far away into a corner and set AI to coward so you don't have to control the character anymore. Now for Monk, keep using focus for JP and Chakra to heal the enemy until Gafgarian unlocks Geomancer. Have Ramza use Tailwind on the Monk for faster turns as well. While this is going on, keep using focus with the Geomancer. This one will take a while too, so check up on Gafgarian every now and then. Once he unlocks Geomancer, make sure Geomancer is at least level 2. Once it is, you can end the battle now. I recommend saving after this fight as you don't want to lose your hard work. And before going into the next story battle, learn Steel from Ramza and increase everyone's base bravery to 97 in random battles as you want your reaction ability to be going off practically every time. Once you achieve this, head to Aragway Woods. The setup and process for Aragway Woods can also vary. Some people like getting Gafgarian to high 90s here while some don't. I like him at high 95 or low 96 so he can throw Excaliburs right away at Zircho Falls. I also like having no weapon equipped as he can do some pretty decent damage with high speed and a dagger. I also recommend leveling him up as a chemist here so his stats will be worse overall in the next fight and him using potions on your characters can help him level up so I recommend 99 of these as well. For the party set up here, you can do either 2 thieves and 2 archers, 1 ninja, 2 thieves and 1 archer, or 1 ninja, 1 thief and 2 archers. I personally like the first one best as getting level 5 thief takes the longest. Some people do like the single ninja so Gafgarian can learn other items to throw, but I just found knight swords by far the most desired thing. But if you want the other items thrown instead, it's totally up to you. Here is how I like to go about it. Make sure everyone has 97 bravery, critical recover HP, and JP boost. 
then Ramza as Thief with Metal, second Thief with Martial Arts and Chakra, the first Archer with Fundaments and Focus, and the fourth Archer with Mystic Arts and Fervor, so he can get Berserk on Gafgarian if you want. When the battle begins, I like to save Boko and just mount him, then KO Agrius and all goblins but the black one. When it's Ramza's turn, have him constantly use Tailwind on the Black Goblin so he gains more turns to get to 99, as this will increase Gafgarian's XP gain over the course of battle, and use Chakra on both if their HP gets too low. Then surround the Black Goblin with your four characters until he reaches 99, then later move one of them out of the way so Gafgarian can eventually reach 99 by attacking him. Also have Ramza use Tailwind on Gafgarian too, so he can get in more turns faster. This is a very long process, but by the time the Goblin reaches level 99, Gafgarian should have Ninja unlocked, and he should have enough to learn one throw ability, which I like using to learn Knight Sword. After Ramza uses Tailwind enough so Gafgarian has 50 speed, keep him around and move your two archers much further back and set their AI to Coward. Now is the grind and waiting game for Gafgarian to reach level 99 or your desired level, which is yet another painful grind. Make sure Gafgarian doesn't get KO'd or have his HP too low, so use Chakra on him when needed. Or to have Ramza use Chant on him to heal him up, then Chakra on Ramza. You can also use Berserk on Gafgarian, but you just need to be extra careful on the Goblin's health and his health, so monitor them closely as this will also take a long time for Gafgarian to reach 99 or your desired level. I chose 96 as this is the level he throws Excaliburs, and make sure the goblin isn't in a spot where he can't get out as he could die and this grind will be over. So for your safety you can opt out of Berserk or make sure you have the monk's purification to remove it. This can take a long time and several hours so you need to be patient, but we finally did it. Gafgarian at the desired level I wanted and he has ninja unlocked. Some people want him lower for a defender, but I prefer that he just starts throwing Excaliburs. This next part can also be time consuming, tricky, and difficult as Gafgarian can easily one shot Abelia or even you if you aren't lucky. In preparation for Xerchil Falls, there are several ways you can go about this as it may require some resetting as Obelia can easily be KO'd by the Night Swords being thrown at her. I'll show you my builds and party setups. So I do like a party of ninjas as they are fast and mobile, equipped with thieves hat if possible. You can get this from enemy squires and archers at higher levels in random battles on Mandalia planes. Just go from Egros and pray for good RNG. I just recommend it though as it will give them more speed to get in turns before Gafgarian, so they can attempt to cast spells or block Obelia from getting Night Swords thrown at her. For Ramsa and your three ninjas, I recommend Sticky Fingers for their reaction abilities, Swiftness for their support ability, and Moot Plus 3 or Teleport for movement abilities. For your secondaries, a variety can work, however I do like Time Magic on two ninjas with Stone Immobilize, and one with Martial Arts with Chakra, and items with Phoenix Downs is a safe bet to revive, as there is a lot of uneven terrain and elevation here. I also use something not as conventional in one of these clips. In this example, I use Summon on Ramza and use Golem, as this will protect Obelia from a single Night Sword throw. However, casting Slow on Gafgarian in combination with Immobilize is safe and works well. Even using Immobilize on Obelia can work, as I notice she usually likes to walk up to him just asking for a death wish. We also have to set up Gafgarian, so for his job I don't recommend him being a ninja as he will be fast and mobile. I prefer him being in a job with less speed, mobility, and one where he doesn't have that many abilities learned at all, so he will just focus on throwing or attacking to gain XP. In this example, I'm using him as Dragoon as he has no jump abilities and it has a base move of 3. Just make sure he has no equipment and to have throw as his secondary ability with the Night Swords learned or whatever weapon you desire. The goal is to try and KO everyone on the field but your controllable characters, Gafgarian and Ovelia, and to try and block him off so he has no choice but to throw weapons or attack you while Ovelia is far away. It's easier said than done and it did take me a few tries to get him where I want him to be. Even though it's even more grinding, swiftness from Time Mage to immobilize and slow Gafgarian forcing him to throw Night Swords can be really handy and I rarely failed in this setup. 
So I got him to this point where he eventually leveled up because he would sometimes attack my ninja in front, where he gained experience and would sometimes throw night swords at other characters. As for the weapon quantity, it's really up to you. I got around 6 Excaliburs from this battle, as well as like 12 Chaos Blades, which is more than good enough for me, so I'm happy to end it. Just note not to have your bravery in battle be 100, as he won't ever throw Night Swords at you. Stay at 97 bravery in battle. I also recommend that the person he is physically attacking to have Chakra, so they can heal from his regular attack damage. As for how the battle and how it will play out, I like approaching it like this, and I'll show the step by step and how to approach it with edits of course. So for this battle, here's how I like to set up the units, Ramza here, and your three ninjas here. So we're gonna head, go ahead and start this battle. So I just edited out the talking, and here's Ramza, here's the build. Defense boost on him because he needs to survive, or it's game over, and the items will help reliably revive units with phoenix down as you can see a lot of the terrain here in elevation is uneven so you can't use chakras revive reliably and here's the ninja high magic swiftness sticky fingers or catch if you're familiar with the ps1 version move plus three it'll make them very very mobile so what you want to do here is go after this knight hopefully ramza kills him and he does so good RNG and chances and you see Gaff here in here he's a Dragoon with throw that uh, slower speed and move three will be really really useful so we can get off mobilized and slow 91% chance we're probably gonna be good but just try and body block Lobelia just in case this guy has martial arts just move him up here wait and we're gonna have this ninja try to immobilize so 98 percent chance very very good 65 percent chance on delita so yes immobilize now gaff garyan will be in a position and obelia will be in a safer position nice so Gap Garion can choose to melee Ramza here, and he's going to gain experience. Um, if we move away, he will use throw. So I like this process because he can melee you, and that will help him gain levels. and he can throw as much as you want again it's up to you on the quantity i found excalibur to be the best knight sword in my opinion and we're gonna edit this part out okay now we're back so abelia and delito we're talking um and i'm gonna edit this part out all right so let's try and uh body block here just in case. Yep, and there's the Excalibur. It can like one shot anyone. So let's try and get rid of everybody. Ninja KO'd. Aegis stat will protect her from a really deadly attack. Let's wait. Let's go after Delita, man. Oh man, he blocks it. Seriously. It's like 75% chance. Let's see if this North Wayne Strike or Crush Punch does not KO the enemy knight. Let's wait. And here we go. Gaff Garion's gonna start throwing Excaliburs. Let's wait. And just keep waiting. So we're in a good spot. And this ninja needs to KO. Delita, let's go for another immobilize. Yeah, and you can also use slow on him as well. That can guarantee safety. 
KO Nalita there. Uh, let's go here. And Ophelia should go up on the right side now. Nice. So we're just going to keep waiting. Um, again, it's up to you on how many Excaliburs you want. There we go. We got like three already. So I'll show you the part of how to level up Gafgarian. So I'll have this guy face here. And he should want to physically attack this guy. Sometimes he'll still throw stuff. But that's how you'll he'll gain XP, essentially. And just keep immobilize up on him. And have this guy use Chakra. You rinse and repeat. So he's gonna heal from Gafgarine's damage. And that's how you'll gain the stronger Night Swords. So after Excalibur, it's going to be Ragnarok. Then 98-99. It's going to be Chaos Blades. And he'll throw the higher damage ones, of course. We're just going to wait. He's going to attack. So he's slowly gaining XP here. And I'm just going to edit this part out. But here, he's 97. And he's throwing Ragnarok. And we just need him to be 98 or 99. And he'll do Chaos Blades. So Chakra. Keep this ninja up. And since he's right next to him, he's more likely to physically attack him. And with Sticky Fingers and his back turned. Yep, Gafgarian will want to focus him and... See, he'll gain XP. So I'm going to edit this part out and he needs to be 98, 99. And I'm going to show you how to get him through cast blades. Again, um, you have to keep immobilized up on him. Have this ninja use chakra to keep himself up and to restore MP of the other ninjas with uh, time magic. So yeah, here's the process. Immobilize. Just check the order. 100% chance. Mobilize. There we go. So again, if I were to do like a full-on playthrough of it, it would take time. But let's skip the Chaos Blades. So that took a bit, but uh, Gap Yuri is 98 now. And here we go. Throwing Chaos Blades. So, you just got to keep him mobilized up on him here. And make sure your MP is not too low so you can keep immobilizing him. And this is how you get Night Swords in Chapter 2. So, it's a very rough and grinding process, but this is how you get much stronger equipment than normal. So look at that. Cut. Just stay out of his uh, melee range of the one tile. So yeah, keep him as a Dragoon. Don't give him any equipment. Make sure he has no abilities. There's the Immobilize. And he's just gonna keep throwing Night Swords. And hopefully this video and tutorial was pretty clear and easy to follow but there's also gonna be other ways to get stronger items if you don't want to do this grind I'll be showing all the ways after he throws one more night sword and Obelia up top here will keep her safe but I found the immobilize method with swiftness move plus three like 
the safest way to get Night Swords here. Let's keep waiting, Chakra. Bam, one more Chaos Blade. So I'll be showing the other ways to get more overpowered items and I'll get back to you right now. So that is by far the most grueling grind, but I'll show the other ways to get other strong weapons and items, but we will have to move forward in the story. At the Fenlands, there is a chance for a pig to be encountered in this story battle. So bring in an order or someone with speechcraft and beast tongue will be handy. Just keep resetting until it shows up. The pig is great because it can lay eggs for swines, which can be poached for chantages, which give permanent re-raise and regen. And the swines can lay eggs that can hatch wild boars, which give ribbon, that makes you immune to virtually all negative status ailments. We can't unlock the poacher's den until chapter 3, but invite this monster and keep it around till then. You can also steal Gavgarian's blood sword, which you can't obtain normally until later into chapter 4 at the gallows. And you could also steal his ancient sword at Lionel Castle if he wanted. And they are better than any weapons you can get at this point, assuming if you didn't catch Night Swords. This wraps up Chapter 2 and the strongest possible equipment you can get, which are Night Swords through the Gafgarian Ninja Trick, along with stealing the blood and ancient swords from him. You can also find stronger equipment from human enemies and random battles too. I just recommend enticing them. When Chapter 3 begins, this opens up other very strong items that you can get because of the Poacher's Den. Not to mention other areas where we can encounter other monsters. So that pig that we recruited in Chapter 2 will come in handy. And I'll also point out other monsters which you may want to recruit. Have them lay eggs and poach. As well as another battle where you can potentially cache weapons too. So with the pig, walk between cities or areas and they will lay eggs. Dismiss all the regular pigs and keep swine and wild boars only, as the tier 1 monsters won't lay eggs for the stronger tier 3 ones. You can get chantages from the swine and ribbons from the wild boars. They are common poaches, so you should get these on your first try usually. Just don't poach all your rare monsters at once unless you're content with all the items you want, as once the pig family is gone from your formation, you must wait until chapter 4 to be able to entice more. Ribbons and Chantages are arguably more overpowered than Excaliburs and Chaos Blades, and a team of females with these equipment items can make the game easy. Another battle where you can get some Chapter 4 monsters earlier is in the Luso fight. Enticing the Behemoths can be a good decision as you can get Church as common poachers from the King Behemoth and Artemis Bow as the rare. The Dark Behemoth's rare poach is the Stone Shooter. It has a lot of weapon power and is usually only available in late chapter 4. Not to mention, Dark Behemoths are a very strong monster to be used in your party as well. Just make sure not to poach all your Dark Behemoths or get rid of them at this point as you won't be able to get them until way later. Some other monsters worth enticing and waiting for tier 3 monsters to hatch from eggs are from the Dryad, Dragon, Floating Eye, and even the Minotaur family. I like encountering Treants or Dryads at Yu-Gi-Oh Woods and enticing them, and hope they lay eggs so I can try to poach Elder Treants for their rare poach to the Defender. This is how you can get Night Swords without too much grinding, just need to be lucky. You can encounter a Blue Dragon at Grog Hill going from Yardro. While you can get a Dragon Rod as a rare poach item from it, this is not really worth it. I suggest saving it as this can lead to you getting a red dragon which can give sword lidges from common poaches and dragon whiskers from their rare poaches which are some of the strongest pole arms at this point. I'm not a fan of knives much but you can get the best ones from plague horrors which are the tier 3 monsters from the floating eyes. It is a rare poach like most of these items, but they are pretty nice on thieves. For the Minotaur family, entice the tier 1 members or try to find Minotaurs at Balius Tor or the Fenlands and try to get them to lay eggs for the secret. The common poach for these tier 3 cows is the Holy Lance, which can proc holy on a melee attack, which is insane with the right build and with some luck. The rare poach ivory pole isn't that useful in my opinion, but a two-handed build with the mystic can be fun and do great damage. If you want the strongest books and bags, enticing a Marlboro and hoping it lays eggs for an Ochu that can give you a greater Marlboro is your best bet. The common poach for the greater Marlboro is Elixir, and if lucky, you can get the rare Omulex, the strongest book. 
Rare poaches from the wild boar can give you the falling star bag. Not really worth aiming for as its damage is just random and ribbon is just better, but some ladies just love bags. You can also obtain some stronger than normal equipment if you have access to the rendezvous missions and melee mode at this point if you are playing on the War of the Lions PSP remaster through multiplayer. Just be at higher levels and 5 star the more difficult missions. Just note, you won't have access to the post game battles like Brave Story and An Ill Win because we need to beat the main story to unlock it. This was my video on how to unlock and get some of the most overpowered equipment much earlier on as well as stronger items than the ones being sold at the shop. Some of these like the Gafgarian Night Sword grind is extremely Kaizo, but being at higher levels and enticing pigs to eventually get ribbons and chantages is a lot more achievable. I hope everyone enjoyed this video. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.